Welcome to my first ever book review video on Cozy Reads with Sarah. I'm Sarah and my first video will be discussing the oh so lovely It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. I do not have a physical copy of the book. I had bought it for very cheap on Chirp, which Chirp is amazing. They have amazing deals on audiobooks. I am not sponsored by them. I'm just saying. And then the second book is The September House. I absolutely love The September House. That's Carissa Orlando. I rated It Ends With Us one star. And the only reason I finished the book was because it's a book that I purchased. Even though I only paid a couple dollars for it, I still purchased it. So if it's a book that I've purchased, whether it's an Audible or audiobook or Kindle or a physical book, I try to read it. Library books, I do DNF from time to time. So It Ends With Us is a one star review and The September House is a five star review. These stories are literally the same story. It's just in different time frames of a person's life. So we'll start with It Ends With Us as that's the first book I read. And this is about Lily and Ryle. And it's really about Lily's story about her growing up. And there's a story with her first love, Atlas. Now, the names right away just annoy the heck out of me. Ryle, Atlas, come on. And Lily, I forgot what her Lily's middle name is, but it's Lily. Oh, it's Lily Blossom Bloom, Blooms, something like that. Ridiculous names. <laughs> I was just not feeling the names and I kind of wish that Hoover had just focused a, the story on Lily and maybe her, you know, going back to her father's funeral and rereading her journals about her time with Atlas because that story was actually interesting. If I was basing the book off of just that story, I would have maybe given it two and a half, three stars because it was actually interesting. What I had a problem with was the portrayal of Lily and Ryle's relationship. They meet one time and he's weird. He acts very weird and off-putting. And if a man acted like that to me, I'd be like, oh, I never want to run into him again. <laughs> again, it's that whole Fifty Shades of Grey situation where if he wasn't rich, that behavior would not fly. Again, it comes down to class and it's just his behavior was, gave me the ick. Uh, Lily is very naive. I know she's only 23, but she's super, super naive. When she, we're learning, seeing about her as a teenager, it's understandable. And she has a very traumatic childhood. And it's interesting that she goes from being like, I'll never let that happen to me, to she lets it happen to her. And she marries the guy. I just really had problems with Lily and even Atlas's relationship because she's a child and she's rescuing, she's saving this guy. Yes, you know, that's a great deed that she did. But that also, that relationship also kind of felt a little... Ugh, to me as well I mean he was 18 she wasn't 18 yet and she's helping this guy out he's an adult legally he's an adult and she's sneaking him in her room and it's you know it puts her in a really bad situation with a very scary alcoholic father who is very mean and is known to be abusive and throughout the book up until a certain point he ha doesn't hit let me say this so I don't get censored he doesn't lay hands on Lily until a certain point and then uh he does then when we fast forward to Lily and Atlas like there's a time jump which is a little jarring and just the wish fulfillment of the story it's just a little silly like oh her father dies and then you know, all these things just fall into place and da 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 and, you know, her and her mom now just get along. Like, there's a lot of resentment when you grew up in a household 
where your mother did not stand up for herself or protect the children in the household from the abuse. So t for her to just be like, yeah, I'm an adult now, but I'm gonna let my mom, you know, be my neighbor or move near me. Like, uh, I don't know. I, I understand that Lily does not have any boundaries as we see with her relationship with Ryle. She is very much trained, which we don't see that in the story, but I mean, it's implied that she's trained like every other good girl in the United States at least to be a people pleaser, to take care of people, to not even worry about your own needs or safety. It's always about other people, especially men. And that Ryle is a red flag, like I said from the beginning, he's being inappropriate, he's saying really cringe, disgusting things she's already said you know I'm not that type of girl like I don't just sleep with guys on the first date or the first time meeting I'm not a one night stand kind of woman like it's just disgusting and he keeps kind of like every time he runs into her saying these things propositioning her to sleep with him right away and she's already set her boundary and <sighs> You know, when they finally, because it's a Hoover book and it's considered romance, when they finally hook up, it's so disgusting. It is so heteronormative and it's just like kissing and then they're doing it. And she, it's like amazing. It's like the best, it's the best she's ever had. And she knew that the minute he slept with her, he was just going to be so addicted. He, this commitment phobic narcissistic damaged man is just gonna fall he's been, gonna be whipped basically just from one time because she's just so magical and she's so addictive and she's really is a kind of drug that was used like it's so disgusting ladies please don't chase after men and if you've turned a man down once twice three times please don't no it's disgusting it's a red flag a uh, no is a full sentence and you shouldn't have to explain yourself. The spice is just, it's boring. It's male centered, it's male gay centered. It's its just really, there's nothing there. It's, I rated the spice a negative one. I personally don't find abusive men sexy. So even there's a couple of other scenes that may be a little bit well, no one maybe that may be a little bit more spicy, but then the final spice scene is disgusting. It's not, I know a lot of people say great scene. That's not sexy. That's not sexy. I don't want to read about that. It's, it was very sexually violent and scary for Lily and disgusting. And the fact that she marries him and married him, ignoring all the red flags and just going with the flow and getting caught up in it. I mean, I know that that's, you know, how people get themselves into these relationships because the men don't start out overtly. It's all very kind of coercive and kind of like, oh, he was just joking or he didn't mean it or, you know, Royal has a, a such a sad story. I'm sorry, ladies, but it's not your responsibility to do the emotional work for damaged men. And it's not your responsibility to save them. It's their work to do. Please don't do it for them. Um, yes, Ryle has a very sad story, but you know what? Everybody has a sad story. Everybody has trauma. She had trauma. That's why, you know, they obviously fell in love, which is a really sad thing. Lily, Lily really needed a good trauma-informed therapist. I know there's not many out there. They're very far and few between. Like the best ones I've found have just been online. Like trying to find a trauma-informed therapist in real life is pretty difficult. But I, I didn't like that there was a love triangle. That trope to me is just so overplayed. It's so boring. Why? Why Hoover? Why are you following in, you know, Twilight's footsteps with this whole silly love triangle that really didn't need to be? Like I said, if the story focused on Lily and Atlas, that would have been one thing, but it didn't. So anyway, 
I'm going to say that this whole video, spoiler alert, so hopefully you've already read the book, but major spoiler alert right now. If you get pregnant with an abusive man's child, it doesn't end with you. It doesn't end with us, meaning you and your baby. It doesn't, especially if at the end of the book where you see that Ryle comes and picks up, you know, or she's dropping the baby off with Ryle. No, that father should not be having unsupervised visits with his child. Yes, it's his child. However, he has blackout rages where he doesn't know what he's done. And that's always his excuse. I didn't mean it. I didn't know. He literally blacks out and that's when he hurts Lily. He is not in control of his emotions, his behavior. He has no emotional intelligence. He has no control. Okay. He has no emotional competence and he is a toxic male. He absolutely should not be allowed alone with his child. I think it's great, you know, Colleen Hoover shares her story and how her mother left her father and then remarried and Colleen, you know, the happy ending, right? Okay, great. That's wonderful for, you know, Miss, Mrs. Hoover, whatever, you know, she goes by, but um, no. You, you know, that's wonderful that her father, her biological father, never hurt her. However, however, usually people like that, it doesn't matter if you're the wife or the child or, you know, as long as you're in the family, they're going to hurt you if they have the opportunity. So I didn't like the ending. I did not like that. I can tell you unless she gets that daughter some counseling and her self counseling that it will not end with them and it's not flowery there is you know post-traumatic stress and there's complex stress disorder and those scars of that of those violent of that violence and that fear and lily definitely i mean the stuff that she saw her father do to her mother would definitely cause complex uh, trauma, you know, post-traumatic stress within me. So I can only imagine, you know, she lived it and it's horrific and no child should see their mother being graped by their father. That's just inappropriate on every level and disturbing and not okay. And so it's just very scary to me that Colleen Hoover is putting this narrative out there that it's okay to let violent men near your children that's not a good message we do not want to be sending that out i think it's wonderful that she has it that though that lily leaves him that's wonderful that's a great message but let's start teaching young girls and young women and young adult women to look for the red flags and to not even entertain these abusive, emotionally immature men. It's not our job to save men. I love that women have the opportunity to make their own money, have credit cards, have savings and checking accounts, can start businesses. Lily had money. She had had her own house. She had her own means. She did not need to get married. There was no financial incentive. So at least there's that, you know, back in the, the 70s, women were like just barely being able to get a credit card in their name. You know, there's all these freedoms that ha have just recently opened up in the last 50 years for women. I don't want to go back. And I think it's amazing that I see on social media, young little children learning about bodily autonomy, learning that it's not their responsibility to save others. I hate that, you know, don't tell little girls that if a boy is abusing her, harassing her, pulling her pigtails or lifting up her skirt, that that means he likes her. No, that's disgusting. That is a violation and that little boy is abusive and there's things going on in his home and he needs some counseling and he needs some help. Don't tell your little daughters that he likes her. I don't think that's going on anymore. I hope not, but uh, I'll get off my soapbox. 
Lily is just the ultimate like pick me, pick me. She's just so like, you know, cavalier about everything. And I'm just so cringe. I I can't support going to see the movie. Uh I I just don't agree with the message and it just it just plays into notions that it's women's work to do the emotional labor in a relationship and no it's not so that is uh my review of it ends with us why i had such a like reaction to it it was just very triggering to me because there's so many things going on there's alcoholism there's domestic abuse there's great there's stalking I mean Ryle knocks on 29 doors to find Lily he she did not tell him where she lived that is so terrifying stalking is not sexy it's not romantic let's not normalize that let's not tell women and girl, girls and women that that's romantic it's not the September house is a gothic horror and I rated this five stars. It is everything that it ends with us should have been, could have been. This is literally about a couple in, how do you say, is it in the like October, is it the September or the October of your life? They're nearing retirement age. They're, they're older. They're older than a middle-aged couple. And they move to this, to their dream house. It's a, it's a beautiful Gothic house and the woman can paint. She has a painting space and the husband can write. He's a writer and surprise, surprise. So there's going to be spoilers for this one as well. We find out that Javi is a recovering alcoholic and he's supposedly on the bandwagon and wifey we find out like it's a slow unraveling about the reality of these two of their relationship so she goes back and talks about their history and again their relationship it started pretty quickly and it went moved pretty fast and she got pregnant fast and had a daughter so this one also had a daughter and the abuse she just she describes it how it you know start slowly and not very often and then it revs up revs up and uh how again she was like it's all about rules my husband knows he can hit me but he can't hit our daughter so she she lives her life like if i don't break the rules if i follow his unwritten rules then i won't get hit but she knows that sometimes she will still sometimes get hit. So the rules aren't fool safe. And she knows that, okay, he has unspoken rules, but so do I. But really her only unspoken rule is don't hit the daughter. Like, you know, these are not things that have ever been communicated. So we find out that he had like two or three DUIs. So he went to counseling and supposedly he got better. Um, she doesn't talk to anybody except her neighbor who comes up the driveway from time to time and they sit outside and they talk. And the husband really just locks himself in his library and just writes. Well, every September, this house that they move into acts up. The walls start to bleed, crazy things happen. But we're in the protagonist, the main female character's head the whole time. And it's it's just so fascinating to like what she calls the ghosts. It's it's really cool. Okay, so she calls them pranksters. And so the pranksters just seem to be more characters of the house. And she knows she learns quickly the rules of the house and Hal doesn't want to learn the rules of the house or play by the rules of the house 
and he just wants to leave and Margaret that is the main character and that's whose head we're in while everything unravels she doesn't want to leave she knows the rules of her marriage she knows the rules of the house she is good with rules she stays she's like I can't I'm not leaving my marriage and I'm not leaving the house so that really becomes the theme but we see how this abusive marriage affects because at the with it ends with us Lily just has the baby like it's a baby her child's a baby with the September house their daughter is all grown up so how Margaret's husband goes missing at the beginning of September or in August actually I think before because he can't handle another September he can't handle the pranksters he can't handle the noises he can't handle the bleeding walls he's over it so he leaves and he wants Margaret to go with him and she refuses so he leaves and their daughter decides to come in September and try to help locate him because she knows her mother's not really doing anything her mother's not really concerned she's called the police and the police are like well he can leave he's an adult he's a grown man he can go and do whatever he wants and you see the unfolding of Margaret reminiscing back to her history with her relationship with Hal and her daughter and then you find out the history of the house and all the abuse and the grotesque things that have happened in the house over the years over the decades over the centuries and through this marriage and we see the daughter the daughter is a type a hypercritical, overanalyzed, anxious, angry woman who was parentified and feels guilty for the abuse that her mother suffered at her father's hands. Her mother sends her away to live with her aunt after her father hits her for the first time. So Hal broke the rules, the daughter gets sent away, the daughter feels guilty even as an adult and knowing that she was the child in the situation, um, she felt guilty leaving her mother behind, not realizing that her mother, it was her mother's decision. Her mother chose her father ultimately over her daughter. So, I mean, if it was me, I'd be pretty ticked off. You know, the relationship between the mother and daughter aren't great. The daughter hardly speaks to the father. You know, it's just a few phone calls here and there and like, you know, very superficial, very super shallow, but really the daughter calls to check up on the mother because she knows that the aunt, the father doesn't like the aunt calling the mother. The father doesn't like people coming over. He doesn't want the mother. So he really isolates her. And then she's even isolated more because of this house, this house that just will not let go of them. It treats alcoholism, domestic abuse, and these issues in the light that it deserves, which is horror. Because being trapped in a relationship like that is horrific. Now, this book is has graphic scenes and is very gory, but the tone of the book, even though it's a dark setting and the house is creepy, the tone is so light you really get into the psychology of Margaret where you know you see how women are really taught to downplay things and we're really not taught self-preservation it's really not about putting safety first it's all about making people comfortable following the rules being a good girl okay so <laughs> um it was an interesting book to read I didn't read it right after but I read it like Two books later after reading it ends with us and it's such a refreshing horror novel because like I said it's horror and it's gory but the the psychology and the backstory is so riveting I really recommend that book I also just finished this book called on our best behavior the seven deadly sins and the price women pay to be good by Elise 
Lonin. I gave that book four stars. It took me a month to read. It's a slow read. It's very dense in its research and discussing how the seven deadly sins came about and that they're not actually in the Bible and they're not even spiritual laws and how it's really used to control society but especially women and keeping them in their place because these seven deadly sins don't really they're not really there for men it's more for women and how we need to re-examine and re-look at the seven deadly sins it's a dense book like I said it took me a month to get through I gave it four stars I wasn't really going to talk about this book right now but it talks about how you know women are trained for goodness and following rules and that's really what the seven deadly sins is is about being a good girl rather than being a spiritual person or following spiritual laws or anything like that so it's an interesting read um that kind of goes in with the theme of everything i've been reading lately that we really need to learn to teach our daughters bodily autonomy, setting boundaries, saying no, not doing the emotional work or labor for other people, especially men, uh, really minding your own business, you know, live and let live. Why are we as a society, I really like this, Elise brings this up uh, in on our best behavior. Why are we so worried about other people's choices, especially when they don't affect us? You know, especially when it comes to women's bodily autonomy with politics. Uh, why are church people so worried about other people's souls? Not everyone has the same beliefs. Not everyone has the same religious background. Not everyone is a Christian or monotheistic i mean there's hindus and jewish people and you know other jewish law permits bodily autonomy in women uh i think in islam they do as well enforcing christian rule on people and it's not even a christian rule it's you know because in early colonial times women could terminate a pregnancy up until the quickening and the quickening was when they could feel the baby kick so this whole like trying to control women and women's bodies is a very new concept and it feels very american and it feels it's very icky like i know i keep saying icky a lot but um it's just, it's just really frustrating it's like when will women stand up and get mad enough and start demanding equality in health care and equality in our daily lives and equality you know we have equality pretty much in the workforce i mean there's still some things but you know women are working you know and making money like i said and living their own lives and starting businesses and have their friends but you know where is the health care and where is the research where are women's rights like it shouldn't be this hard <laughs> to be seen as a human being to be seen as a person rather than an object or a thing or only there to serve one purpose it, it's pretty sad Anyway, this wraps up my portion of my book review. So on our best behavior, uh, The Seven Deadly Sins and the Price Women Pay to Be Good, four stars. The September House, five stars. Um, trigger warning, gore, alcoholism, domestic abuse, uh, child abuse. It ends with us. Trigger warnings is abuse, stalking, domestic abuse, grape, uh, child abuse, uh, and just really icky, unsexy, <laughs> you know, things of love. All right, so I live in Roswell, New Mexico. We do not have any bookstores, which is super sad. But I went to, it's called Books Again, and it's the uh, Roswell Library 
uh, you can donate your books there and make money for the library. So it was bag day. I don't know if y'all can see this. So we filled out this bag. I got a ton of movies and books for $5. So I've never heard of this. I love Sarah Michelle Gellar. I got Harvard Man. A thing of four movies of Alfred Hitchcock, which I've never heard of these. Jamaica Inn, Sabotage, The 39 Steps and Easy Virtue, as well as Charade, which I've seen this one. This is also a movie by Alfred Hitchcock. I love Hitchcock films. We got ha Harlem Nights. I need to read this book, Never Let Me Go. I keep saying maybe I'll read it next, but I definitely need to read it now that we get the movie. And then Autumn in New York with Winona Ryder. I got Kabul Beauty School. And like, look at this. It's, it looks like basically new. Like it's, it's in really good shape. White Heat, The Friendship of Emily Dickinson and Thomas Wentworth Higginson. I love Emily Dickinson. We went to see her house, her homestead in Massachusetts a couple years ago. And I just absolutely fell in love with her after watching the show Dickinson on Apple Plus. Freya. Three cups of tea. Now I may already have this book, but I picked it up because again, like look at how good of shape it's in. And um, I love this author, I love his book. So in case I don't have this copy, I picked it up. Talking about um, emotional intelligence, I got emotional intelligence 2.0 because we can all use a little bit more in emotional intelligence in our lives. I got the white tiger. It's paperback, but it's also, again, it's in decent shape. And contemporary watercolors. I got all of these books. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight books. And six DVDs for $5. So amazing deals. I have a lot of reading to do, which I already have a lot of reading to do. And lots of movies to watch. I like physical media because if you rely on streaming services, you may think you can watch it and then it's gone. Like you get halfway through a show and they pull it and they put it on another streaming service or it's just gone. So, um, you know, once we read these or watch these, we'll probably just, you know, bring them back and let them sell it again to someone else. So it's kind of like, you know, having a free little library. I love it. Nikolai had gotten, we bought some other DVDs for him. It wasn't good, but like we can just bring it back, you know, and let them resell it and hopefully someone else will enjoy it. But I hope you enjoyed my first video on this channel and I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye.